Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the outside open garage video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta <laughs> Hello, you have reached Russ Grace with RWGResearch.com Open-Source-Energy So, this is the OSD I got some really cool stuff to show you. So I've temporarily set up the OSD and it is operational. I can home it. I can set it to do a probing function to set the bed. Everything is clearly working at the moment. Give you a better look. I've strapped everything to that board temporarily connected all of the electronics and the Z probe so we can actually check that stuff all temporary all for one main reason so what is that reason well say hello to my little friend this is a very small air pin 60,000 rpm and I'm going to attach that right there. Guess what? I am actually going to attempt to cut the circuit boards for the printer that go in the housings up here and also the stuff that goes underneath the bed. I'm going to actually attempt to cut those circuit boards on this printer. So this printer is going to be making its own circuit boards. So I have one of these tungsten carbide cutters. All right, this is what they look like, this tungsten carbide. So I have one of these cutters and I turned it into an etching cutter. All right, so you can see that's an etching cutter style cutting tool. Now these cost um, somewhere between 20 and thirty dollars if I get that focus twenty and thirty bucks so I just made my own so let's go ahead and jump into that footage real quick and show you how I made this it seems the only thing I can really get to cut this carbide tungsten piece here is some of these diamond coated bits so guess we'll go at it with the Dremel for a little while and see what we can manage We've managed to cut a point. It's a sharp point. Now we gotta cut that other edge. Yeah. Okay, using the milling machine, I went ahead and uh, cut that center edge. I don't need much. All right, using the protractor we are roughly 60 degrees angle so let's try it alrighty then so I did uh, go ahead and cut this whole jobby seems to be in fine and now what I'm gonna do is probably take a tiny bit off the top but honestly it feels pretty good I did cut a, uh, a relief on the back side so basically uh, what happens is is I cut it deeper just after the point that it's going to be cutting and that will allow it to uh, not hit on the side that isn't supposed to be cutting. Alright, I have a taped piece of circuit board. It can move ever so slightly. So we're going to see how gentle this will cut. I put it in here. Let's give it a go. Okay, I'm gonna try that again. This time I'm gonna run it as fast as it'll run on here, which is not nearly as fast as the Dremel, and I'm gonna run it a little slower on my speed of travel. I right, am gonna run it the other direction now. Right. 
almost looks like it cuts better that way. Now I'm gonna go a little deeper. Now the other direction. <laughs> let's see what it looks like under a microscope. All right, let's try to get this on film. No idea if it's gonna work. Oh, not bad. All right, let me get this on there and see if we can see it. Okay, so as you can see, the middle is one rotation, the second spiral is a different rotation. You can see a much better cut. And then the same thing with the outer ones, Let's see if I can get to the edge. So you can see uh, one rotation is much better than the other rotation. And I cut it really slow at the end there. Ah, there we go. Okay, so you can see I cut it slower there at the edge. Probably easier to move the thing, but anyway, you can see the difference. I think that's acceptable. I think that is acceptable, so now we can do some serious cutting. At high speed, I think it'll be even better. All right, so we've got that. Now we know exactly what we did to make this tool. We're going to attach this tool in here and actually cut with it. Now I have two options. The options are I cut the circuit boards so my original thought was a different method and now I thought wait I could probably just cut the circuit boards. Oh lost the spring so I added a small spring onto the end of my probe, which I'll show you a little close up here. Alright, so you can see I added this small spring and a little holder. That was because I just couldn't get the uh, couldn't get this thing to come back down nicely. So I went ahead and did that. So now what I have here is a needle point on a spring. Okay, so a needle point on a spring. So what I can do is instead of etching with this rotary tool and actually cutting the copper, which is what my plan is, I could coat the entire circuit board with some sort of a paint or Sharpie or something like that. Can we put the and I... out? Ah, little distraction. Anyway, what you could do, which is what I originally was going to do, is coat this with something like a Sharpie or a thin layer of paint and actually use this spring needle to etch or to scratch, okay, just scratch away the places where you want the etchant to cut into the copper. I still might do that. We're going to try to cut it, and then we'll also try to etch one, and we'll see which one works best. Um, I think the etchant will probably work best just due to the fact that cutting this at the right depth might be tricky because this circuit board is actually about half the thickness of a standard circuit board and it's a double-sided coppered clad board so we uh, we might not be able to actually cut this one if I get a thicker one I'd probably be fine but this one's just so thin so we're gonna give that a shot we're gonna see what happens and uh, yeah that's where it stands at right now so let's get started all right, first test run. It literally took me all day to get things calibrated because of problems I was having. Issues that I forgot. It's been too long since I've messed with this, but basically I took a dry erase marker, dry erased it, and then etched it. So you can see the traces on there. Worked out pretty well. It's really, really hard to see. I'd kind of like to attach a pencil to the end of it and try to draw with it because it's just really really hard to see so yep let's move on to the next step alrighty then check it out so I took an ink pen and I cut it off and then I cut, drilled a hole in it and made it fit um, as you can see it can rotate and it's not really in the center and so it's got some issues but good enough and what I learned is is you can see if you look really closely those lines are actually tied together right there so that means my my Z hop minimum was set at 1.5 so anytime it made a jump less than 1.5 it didn't actually pick up and move so good thing I checked it because otherwise I've been cutting traces and stuff like that you can really see it on the RWG OSD right there you can see how it's all messed up and basically 
when I do it again with no minimum hop, it will look a lot better. So yeah, besides the fact that this isn't really in the center like this, um, as long as it didn't rotate too much, it's fine. So I'm going to try it again. I'm going to invert the file because it's actually backwards, and we'll give it a go again. Well, I thought I'd let you hear this thing in operation, so you can hear it with those new uh, rubber motor mounts and running at a very slow speed. It's very quiet. When it goes up and goes back down, the uh, the vibration of the, uh, the Z-Probe is actually what you hear making a lot of a racket. And it appears the ink pen is actually staying in the same orientation, so that's nice. You can see we now have along the no longer have those cross lines across those holes, so we fix that issue. Anyway. Yeah. And I inverted the whole thing so that it's correct now. So now what I need to do is set up a holder so that I can get my circuit boards in here and actually cut them and then be able to flip them and have them the same. Problem is, is my circuit boards aren't actually big enough and they don't actually fit on here, which is a serious issue. I'm gonna have to have, have two of them taped together or something, which is a bit annoying. Gotta love the helicopters in the background. So it's done, and now it's time to uh, move on to the next step. The next step is most likely going to be making sure we can invert the double-sided circuit board. That's probably the trickiest part in making sure everything's right, so we'll see how that goes. Oh my goodness, Malachi, look at yourself. Huh. Well, after many frustrations and all sorts of stuff, I finally did a, a double-sided trace board with paper. And it is hard to see but it's pretty well lined up and it's just so barely not that I'm not concerned I'm going to try cutting one. So we're going to try cutting one for real with the actual stuff. It's always blurry. Let's try it. Yeah. There we go. We're going to try cutting a circuit board. Oh, wish me luck. Here we go, Dexter. Wish me luck. Oh, it's cutting my tape off. I didn't think about that. Okay, we'll retape it. Not the best, but it's something. All right, well, it cut it. It doesn't really look that great, to be honest, but that has to do with the depth and all kinds of things that I've just been fighting. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it, and we're gonna cut the other side.
well, it's been a struggle for many, many, many reasons. And the air compressor is still running. But I have etched a circuit board on the printer that it's for. This printer is truly making itself. So let's pull it off here. Let's have a look. Got good news and I got bad news. Good news is it did work. Bad news is getting the height set right is very difficult. Having a very sharp bit is very important. You see this side actually turned out pretty well. But the problem with the with the way this one turned out and with the way this one turned out had to do with the fact that the copper is actually sticking up here this side you can really see it see how the copper sticking up so I scraped a lot of that off but I didn't sand it smooth and uh, that causes some issues with trying to get it right but yes I did it this printer printed its own circuit boards etched them anyway so I think we're gonna move back to the other method of using a, mar a sharpie marker and just etching away the marker and then doing a real etchant in uh, in the acid Cora whatever or something or another but check it out I mean look how nice the uh, the RWG OSD imprinted on there it's really not bad so can it be done yes it can now most of this has to do with the sharpness of my bit. You can see how bad this is. Although, I'm going to sand this up really good. And we'll see what it looks like, but... Uh, that's it. What's up, guys and gals? So, kind of felt that this video was sort of just letting you guys hang. I wanted to give you some insight. I, I filmed this over a month ago. I want to give you some insight in what I learned since then. So, first of all... The height, uh, getting the height set right was a bit of a problem because I mentioned I, I had the copper sticking up on the bottom so when I put it back on the other side it doesn't really sit flat anymore and I kind of adjusted it on the fly and it really didn't work very well. Second of all, I was in a hurry and I actually ran it twice as fast as I intended it to which made it really look bad and also it was spinning the wrong direction according to my previous test so if it was spinning the other direction it probably would have made a cleaner cut. Uh, I also learned that every time you run this particular Duet Electronics, which is in this video it's 8.0.5, those electronics you can set up an auto bed calibration and it automatically adjusts all sorts of things including the delta, uh, like uh, the actual offset on radius. Uh, uh, the degrees, you know, it changes the arms a little bit to make up for any errors. It also changes the length of the rods and, and, and everything, the, the uh, delta radius. Uh, yeah, anyway. Basically, it adjusts more than it needed to, and you can change that. You can only have it adjust the height, you can have it adjust the height plus the delta radius, you can have it adjust all the parameters, and you can do all this different kind of stuff. I was adjusting all parameters. Now, I built the machine so it was like as best as it could be as far as everything being correct geometry so actually it was attempting to correct something that wasn't wrong which was throwing off the height and everything and I didn't realize that until way after um, also uh, I got lucky with setting it in the right uh, position and flipping it I later did a bunch of stuff you'll see in an upcoming video eventually but basically I, I learned a lot since that video this video you just watched now and we are going to probably end up trying it again uh, along with the other method that I've, I've already done and I don't know if I'm happy with. So anyway, leave your feedback, but I wanted to give you the, the short little things I think were necessary to sort of finish this video. Now, I'm leaving you with a bunch of clips that I removed from this video. If you're interested in watching them, I recommend you just hang on and watch them anyway. And the reason I say that is because I have this thing I attach to my lathe and try to grind that thing. It's kind of interesting. It's an old, old piece of equipment. And it's pretty cool. So if you like old equipment, hang on there. Watch the rest of this video. Okay, that's all I got. See you later. Enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, 
So for the PCB circuit board cutting, I am going to try to make a cutter that looks something like that. So for that, we're going to need something like this. What is this, you ask? This is from my good friend that I got the mill from, Robert K. Hansen. This is a very unique grinder surface finishing type tool that you actually attach to the lathe and use it here for surface finishing as you're rotating. So it's a very unique piece of equipment. I've never actually seen one until I got a hold of this and I was like, wow. So in case you're wondering, there's the information on it. Shaking, sorry. It's upside down. So it has these uh, these surfacers, these grinding wheels, and you basically attach it to the position here. Unfortunately, this is what is for this. This is what comes, you know, with this, and uh, it's obviously for a, a different thing. I've always had problems. This is too shallow for everything I've ever bought for this machine. I even had to machine the. Uh, bottom stock which they come blank to fit this thing and this is too big of a thread it won't fit in this hole so yeah kind of in trouble here I need to make something quick because I want to do this real fast but I basically want to surface a tool using one of these grinding stones to get it down to a small diameter thought you'd like that pretty cool that's an old old thing I don't even know if it has a date on it I looked it up once it's a very expensive tool, actually. Ah, can't even really read what's on there anymore. Okay. Sweet. It's blurry. Alright, well, I did what I could. It's not the best, but it's actually pretty sturdy. So, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm grinding such small amounts, I think I'll be fine. But I wanted to kind of show you how this works. This is, uh... This is just an old belt. I have to hold this with my other hand. There we go. So this is actually on a spring right here. All right, and that's the only thing that holds that belt in place. So yeah, that could slap me right in the face. Let's see if it works. Yeah, because these rollers are rounded. They're beveled out like this. There's different sizes for different cutting speeds. But, uh, yeah, it seems to work all right. We'll see if, uh, let's see if this works. So I'm starting out with a carbide bit like this. Tungsten carbide. And I'm going to be actually cutting the back side. So I, I kind of want to use this cutter for other things. So I'm keeping keeping the front good. It's a good cutter. And I'm going to cut the back side. So what I want to do is just make a little bitty small cut uh, on the inside here. And then actually put this at an angle and cut that uh, cut that angle. That's really all I'm concerned about with using using this. Yeah. Okay. Apparently this is not strong enough. It is eating into my wheel. That sucks. Well that's a bit unfortunate. These stones will not cut this carbide. I thought they would, but apparently 
I was wrong. So I guess we're going to have to get out the Dremel. See if we can find a bit that cuts this carbide. Alright, well get back in your home. Maybe next time you'll be worthy. Mmm, copper dust. That's what we always needed. Peace out. Have a good day.